In this video, we will have a brief review of innate immunity. We have several lines of defense against invasion by microorganisms. This includes our physical barriers, such as our skin and mucous membranes, and the inflammatory response. Together, these make up our innate immunity. We also have adaptive immunity, which provides more long-term immunity, and that will be discussed in a separate video. Innate immunity is something that is always present. It's ready to go whenever you need it. Innate immunity attacks things that are non-self, ideally microbes. It does not distinguish between the different microbes. Innate immunity only knows this is me or this is not me. Mechanisms of innate immunity include our epithelial barriers, such as the skin and mucous membranes, our phagocytic cells, cells that can engulf bacteria and debris, such as neutrophils and macrophages. We have specialized lymphocytes called natural killer cells that are involved in innate immunity. The innate immune system can recognize pathogens. It won't know what the pathogen is, it just knows that it's a pathogen. We have soluble mediators such as opsonins, which tag bacteria, making them tastier to the macrophages, much like a candy coating. We have cytokines that orchestrate the signaling system of the immune system. And we have our acute phase proteins, which cause our systemic response, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, or C-reactive protein. These are things that drive fever during illness. And then we have our plasma protein, such as our complement system, which are involved in both the innate and the adaptive immune systems. Our first barrier in the innate immune system are the epithelial barriers. These are found at ports of entry, such as the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, our respiratory tract, and the urogenital tract. Epithelial barriers provide a physical barrier, and this is present when our skin and mucous membranes are intact. Disruption of skin or mucous membranes disrupt that epithelial barrier, allowing pathogens through. We also have mechanical barriers that can help move microbes out of our system. This includes things like our mucus and our cilia, those hair-like projections that can push uh, microorganisms uh, out of our system. Uh, and then things such as coughing and sneezing that we do in response uh, to invasion by microorganisms. And then we have biochemical barriers. These include our enzymes, such as lysosomes, um, defensins and digestive enzymes that can help uh, degrade or break down parts or all of microbes. And we have our complement proteins that help enhance phagocytosis through that process of opsonization. So now let's look at the cells of the innate immune system. Our first responder and the most abundant white blood cell is our neutrophil. Neutrophils are phagocytic cells, which means they can engulf and degrade debris or microorganisms. And they release powerful enzymes that can kill or inhibit bacteria, that can kill or inhibit fungi. Um, and they also function to recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. They're very much like an emergency responder. Neutrophils are circulating in the blood and they migrate into the tissue upon initiation of that inflammatory response. Because neutrophils have such a powerful enzymatic system, they are short-lived in our tissues to prevent significant damage. Another phagocytic cell in the innate immune system is the macrophage. Circulating, we have monocytes. These are stored in our spleen, and when we have an infection, they will start circulating in the blood. 
Once they enter the tissue, monocytes differentiate into macrophages or into dendritic cells. A macrophage is another phagocytic cell. It will consume foreign pathogens and it can even eat up cancer cells. They also are vital in stimulating the response of other immune cells through that release of cytokines. We have macrophages that live in our tissue all the time, just waiting for some sort of attack. Uh, and so these are long lived. Another role of a macrophage is it can serve as an antigen presenting cell. So while macrophages are innate immune cells, they play a role in adaptive immunity by helping to signal that adaptive immune system. Dendritic cells are cells that live in our lymph tissue. They're like little sentinels that com constantly uh, check the environment and present antigens on its surface to see if we need to make an immune response to something. I think of it as a little toddler that just walks around and keeps picking up something and says, look at this, look at this, look at this. But they play a key role in triggering our adaptive immune response when they show us something we need to make an immune response to. You can find dendritic cells in our epithelial tissues, such as that of our skin, our lungs, and our digestive tract. Once they get activated, they move to the lymph nodes where they can start communicating with our T cells and B cells of the adaptive immune system. And then finally, we have natural killer cells. These are a type of lymphocyte that are innate immune system cells. They will directly kill a cell that's infected with a virus, an intracellular bacteria, or a tumor cell. Natural killer cells are found circulating in the blood and they migrate into the tissues when needed. So let's take a look at what the natural killer cells do. They're basically the bouncer of the immune system. Our cells have specific proteins uh, called a um, major histability complex protein, or MHC. And specifically, all of our nucleated cells have MHC1 proteins on their surface. This is the ID, like the badge that shows I am a cell that belongs in this body. And so the natural killer cell will bind to cells. Uh, and if there's an MHC1 protein on the surface of a cell, that will let the natural killer cell know that they're authorized to be there. It turns off any action of the natural killer cell and they're on their way. So they basically just check the, the badge, check the ID of a cell. If there's a cell that is maybe infected with a virus or um, is a cancer cell that doesn't have that self-identification protein, that MHC1 protein on the surface, then when the natural killer cell binds to that cell, it's not going to engage that inhibitory receptor. That will then cause the natural killer cell to initiate cell death. An important thing to take away is that natural killer cells are innate killers. They don't know what kind of cell it is. They just know it's a self cell, it belongs here, or it's a non-self cell, it doesn't belong here. So anytime a cell doesn't have that MHC1 self-recognition protein, it will be killed by a natural killer cell. These proteins are often downregulated or not expressed in cancer cells or in cells that are infected with a virus. And then finally, let's look at pathogen recognition. So in our innate immune system, remember that our cells only recognize self versus non-self. But one thing we have evolved to do over time is recognize patterns that are common across different microbes. So on the pathogens, they have what we call pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. These are um, sequences on the surface of a protein that our immune system says, oh, 
this is a pathogen. It doesn't know what pathogen it is. It doesn't know why the pathogen's there. Um, it doesn't know who it's talked to. All it knows is that this pattern uh, is associated with a pathogen. On our innate immune cells, we have pattern recognition receptors, or PRRs. This might be an example, a toll-like receptor. These pattern recognition receptors do just what they say. They recognize this pattern on our microbes. When a microbe binds a pathogen recognition, a pattern recognition receptor on the innate immune system, on the white blood cell like a macrophage, it's going to respond. That is going to send a signal to the cell nucleus that says, hey, we need to make some cytokines. Uh, we need to tell the body that this pathogen is here. So it sends off an alert. At the same time, that can signal uh, phagocytosis or ingestion or engulfment of that microbe. So then it can be broken down and take out of the system. Because when there's one microbe, there's usually more. This alarms that get set off will help recruit other innate immune cells, other white blood cells to the site of infection uh, and start to resolve that infection or at least decrease it significantly. And that's a brief overview of the innate immune system.